Hello friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 1st. It's September. Back to school kids, what are you going to do? By the way, if your kids don't watch this show. <laughs> it is a beautiful Sunday here in southeastern Pennsylvania and I am having a very slow and lazy Sunday because uh, of course tomorrow is also a day off. Uh, so did the things I had to do this morning. Uh, but the chore type stuff and all that, I'm going to put that off till tomorrow. Because uh, why not? I am smoking some Esoterica Dunbar, which is actually the uh, tobacco of the week this week. Uh, tobacco of the month this month. There we go. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that today. Uh, I'm just smoking it because I try to have a bowl per day of the tobacco of the month. So that when I do finally talk about it, I can do so with some experience. But what we are going to talk about today are pipes, and in particular, Briar Spirit pipes. You've seen me smoke this before. This is my Briar Spirit pipe that I call Janice because, well, it should be obvious. And if you saw the title card, you'll know the joke. It's not Janice, but Janice. Uh, this pipe was made by a pipe maker named Kirk Fitzgerald, um, who went by the name Briar Spirit or Briar Spirit Pipes. And Kirk was an incredibly unique and talented and unusual pipe maker. And I want to show you my pipes that, that were made by Kirk and, and talk about each one because there's a story behind each one, and he has a story that I think deserves to be told. So, I met Kirk, met online, I've never met him in person. Uh, it was probably around 2013, 2014, and this was when I was active over on the Brother of Briars forum. And uh, just got to know him at first through the forum, and then we started doing some private messaging on the forum. And that evolved to emails, and we, we emailed a fair amount. And I got to know him, and Kirk had a rough life. I believe he's still alive. I shouldn't use, use, I shouldn't use the past tense. I do believe Kirk is still alive, although I have not heard from Kirk. I don't think anyone's heard from Kirk since about 2016. So Kirk is basically missing in action. Uh, Kirk was not well off. Um, he had a difficult life. Uh, wife left him. He had two daughters that he just absolutely adored and rarely got to see them and uh, was not very well off and uh, you know struggled. He really did struggle. And he just hit upon pipe making. I don't know exactly what spurred him on to do it. He was a pipe smoker. And one day he just decided to try his hand at it and realized that he could do it. And quite frankly, he could do it well. I wish I could get this tobacco a little well. Um, he could do it well. You know, he, he was a very talented pipe maker. Now what's remarkable about him is the tools he used. He had one power tool and it was a drill press. That was it. Everything else he did by hand. Everything else. So he shaped this entirely by hand, uh, with the exception of drilling the tobacco chamber and the airway. Uh, because of this, he used, I think exclusively used, uh, prefabricated stems. But he did uh, treat them, you know, funnel them and everything. So he, he did all the right things. And the fit and finish was just impeccable. And you'll see some examples of that. Kirk, again, I do not know, I have not heard from him since 2016, and I hope he's well. I don't know, but I hope he is well. So I do not want to give a lot of personal details about this mess part, but, but Kirk did have some mental health issues, which he was very open about. Uh, and he struggled quite a bit. And when he disappeared, 
it worried me. It worried me quite a bit. And to this day, I worry. I do not know what happened to him. I wish he did, because he was an incredibly kind man. So his approach to pipe making was quite unique. Um, and take this all with a grain of salt, because I'm just going to tell you what he told me. Okay? He sincerely believed this. He, he called his pipe Briar Spirit because he believed that in each block of Briar there was a spirit that had to come out. Now, I never talked to him about this in any detail, so I don't know if he really truly believed that there was a little, you know, spirit in there, or if he was just talking about more of the sort of, you know, natural forces within the Briar or something like that. But he believed there was something there. And he could not make a pipe until that spirit let him know what that block of briar wanted to be. So he would sit there with a block of briar and just meditate on it before he would start carving it. Uh, and given the tools he was using and the results he got, something was guiding him. You know, I'll tell you that much. So. This was not the first one I bought from him. And this, surprisingly, was actually a second. Uh, he didn't like the way that the airway was drilled. And the truth is, if I you know, take a flashlight in there and everything, the airway is just slightly off center. So he was right that this was not a perfectly drilled pipe. But it was pretty darn close. Normally, his pipe sold very quickly. This one, I think, just because it was a bit more unusual, didn't go, and I had a chance to uh, to grab it, and I was happy about that. This is probably this is the second pipe I bought from him. One other thing I'll say about him before we get into more detail on the pipes is that he probably made under a hundred pipes. And he was only active from about 2014 to 2016, but he put out a lot of pipes. Um, but I would guess it was under 100. It might have even been under 50. I don't know. Um, but uh, and not a lot of Briar Spirit pipes out there. So, this was the second one. And I pretty much told you the story behind this. I mean, other than it being called Janus and having some really cool um, grain on one side, which I'm not getting the light right for. And you know, it's very, very nice, again, hand done rustication and a pretty cool acrylic stem. Uh, not, not a lot more to tell about that. The first pipe I bought from him was a commission. And it was based on a pipe I already owned. So this is my pipe. This is not one of Kirk's pipes. This is actually a basket pipe. You've seen it before. And this, I've had this pipe for over 30 years now, and I love this pipe. Um, I bought it for like 20 bucks at some point. And just a wonderfully good smoking pipe. The only identifying mark on it at all is the, the stem is stamped Mexico. So I know nothing about where this pipe came from. And it's ugly as all get out. It's got giant fills on it. It's, it's semi-sandblasted. I mean, it's just a, it, it's a hideous example of, of pipe making. But it's, the shape is nice, and it smokes beautifully. Well, I dropped this pipe and broke the shank off. And this was actually one of my first larger pairs of a pipe. And you can't really see it, but if, if you were here and you took the pipe in your hand and I told you to look for it, you could find a seam. It's not perfect. But I did repair it, and it, and it smokes as good as ever. But I was kind of disappointed in it, you know, just because it wasn't it wasn't whole. And I was talking to Kirk about this, and I said, "Why don't you make me a duplicate of this? Not duplicate, but a a pipe inspired by this?" And he got really excited. He said that's one of his favorite shapes, and he was really looking forward to doing it. So. We got everything worked out, and because of his financial situation, uh, you had to pay up front so that he could get the supplies. 
which, you know, was, would have been a little concerning. However, I had known him for so long at this point and had interacted with him so much that I trusted him. Uh, so I sent him the funds and a few weeks later, he sent me pictures of the finished pipe. And that produced this beautiful, beautiful pipe. And I hope green comes out on that because this is, well, you know, it's going to be hard. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see. This is essentially a straight green. It really came out beautiful. And he did a just an absolutely fantastic job. Now, the funny thing about it is that he did not have this pipe in hand. He only had pictures of it. So, you know, the sizes are a bit off. But they do look very similar. I think he did a great job. And if you, you know, if you do far away and close... <laughs> <laughs> They're almost the same. So, again, keeping in mind that he did this by hand, it's just really remarkable. So that was the first one. I got the pipe, and I thought, this is beautiful. It's a really beautiful pipe. It's a little bigger than I was expecting, but that's okay. I like a big pipe. And then I smoked it, and... This thing smokes phenomenally. I, I've measured it. I've, I've you know, looked at the internals. I have no idea why. It's, it's not different from other pipes that I have in terms of its engineering. But there's something about this pipe that makes it one of my favorite smokers. Um, yeah, I loved it. And I thought, well, I, I need more of these. And then I saw this one a um, short while later. It, I, I accumulated all of these probably in a, I don't know, six to 12 months, somewhere between a half year and a year. So I snatched this one up when it came up as a second on the form. And, uh, you know, same experience. This was just a wonderful pipe. And, Then I decided that I wanted another one, and I wanted to do a commission. And I wanted to basically let him make the pipe with no input. I said, you know, you know me, you know, you've seen my pipes and all that. Make me a pipe that you think I will like. And he was excited about this, and he uh, we went back and forth on it, and he said, you know, I've got stuff here that I can use to make it. What I really want is tobacco. Kirk was a nicotine fiend. Um, he and our buddy Everett Young would have had a big old time together, or they would have fought bitterly over the last bit of nicotine. I don't know. But he loved really strong blends, um, and he he smoked a lot of, uh, what is it, brown bogey and, and those kind of things. He really loved those. But he had this absolute passion for old Joe Krantz. Uh, he also liked the Haunted Bookshop, but old Joe Krantz was his, like, he really loved it. And he asked me if I would send him, in return for the pipe, if I would send him, I think it was four pounds? I can't remember if it was four pounds of old Joe Krantz, or maybe it was two pounds of old Joe Krantz and two of Haunted Bookshop, something like that. And if I sent that to him, he would send me the pipe. He would make me the pipe and all that. And, you know, at the time... The prices were not what they are now, uh, and that was a very reasonable uh, exchange in, in return for the pipe. Well, he then started giving me updates on it, and I was, you know, getting the tobacco and all that, and he said that he had a very special gold ring that he wanted to incorporate into the pipe. And I saw oh, Kirk, you don't need to do that. And he said, no, it's really important to me. I want you to have this as part of your pipe. And I said, okay, well, you know, that's, that's really nice of you. And the pipe was done, and the tobacco was in hand, so I posted the tobacco to him and sent him the shipping information. He's, by the way, I don't know if I said this, he's in the UK. He's in, I think he was in London, actually, or near the outskirts of London. So uh, I send the tobacco over to him, and he, he sends my pipe, and 
you know, a week or so later, the pipe arrives. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, he never got the tobacco. And we traced it to customs. And we, I think ultimately what happened was he said the customs opened it, found out it was tobacco, and destroyed it. I don't know. I, 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 I was, I felt really bad, obviously, because he didn't get paid for his pipe. But I had you know, obviously spent the money on the pipe, and I said, well, you know, this isn't right, Kirk, so what do you want me to do? I can either send you more tobacco, I can send you cash, or I can send you back the pipe. You know, what, what are those things would you like me to do? Because I didn't feel right keeping it. And he was very insistent that I keep the pipe and that I do not send him anything else. He said that I had already spent the money and uh, it would be wrong for him to accept uh, a, a reshipment of tobacco because it wasn't my fault that the customs had... And, you know, on the one hand, he's right and I appreciate it, but on the other hand, I feel terrible about this. So we made an agreement, and I will show you the pipe in a moment. <laughs> we made an agreement. I said, all right, I want to give you a gift. Have you ever made a pipe for yourself? And he said, no, I, I don't own any of my own pipes. I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy the supplies for you to make a pipe for yourself. And I want to do this as a gift. It's got nothing to do with the pipe you sent me, but it's just something I want to do that will make me feel better. And he was very happy about that. He's got really excited about it. He said he's never, never done that before. Um, he had a ring that was his dad's that he was going to incorporate into the pipe. And uh, he gave me a list of it. He actually had me order the stuff from the vendor for him uh, rather than send him the money. He said if he took the money, he would feel like oh, he was being paid. Uh, so I did that. I got all the stuff shipped to him. And uh, unfortunately, I lost contact with him. He lost contact with everyone because he just disappeared. I don't know if he ever finished that pipe. I don't know if he ever... Uh... Yeah, I don't know what happened. I've never sold the pipe. I never heard from him again. So this is the pipe he sent me. Remember, this is the one he made for me with a very special ring and without any input. And it is just an absolutely gorgeous pipe. There's a really unique detail here at the Bowl Shank Junction. I hope you can see that little scallop. But it works really well with the overall design. Actually ac accentuates some of the design on the stem. And there's that gold ring, uh, which again, he said was special to him. I don't know what this gold ring is, but anyway, um, I've never smoked this pipe. I can't. I can't smoke it because I, I feel like there's a an unfinished connection between him and I in this pipe. I feel like the contract has not yet been completed and I can't smoke it. And I know that sounds strange and people are going to say, he made it to be smoked. You should smoke it. Yes, I know. But maybe someday I will. Maybe someday I will, but I have not been able to since 2016, 2015 maybe. Oh, yeah, that is my, the last Briar Spirit pipe that I bought from Kirk Fitzgerald. And Kirk, I really, really hope you're doing well, buddy, because uh, I miss you. Now, that's not the last one I own. And what spurred me to make this video is I occasionally, very occasionally, see one for sale. And I try to snatch it up. And I managed to do that. Actually, right before the Columbus show, I got this pipe. And uh, I'm excited about this. Kirk would have never used a velvet bag. The guy that restored this, and this has been restored, used a velvet bag. Now, this is not my style of pipe, but 
It's Briar Spirit. And Kirk's stamping, I do not know if I'm going to be able to show you this or not, but we will try. There you go. He used three stars on the bottom of his pipes. How you knew it was a Briar Spirit. Uh, wanted to get a stamp made, but couldn't afford to, and I guess never got around to it. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, that's almost, a, that certainly is a full bent. Almost an oompaw, <laughs> so bent. Not my kind of pipe. But I had to have it. You know, it was, it's one of Kirk's pipes. Uh, so anytime I see them, I, I try to buy them up. Uh, they're rare, though. Very rare that you see one of these. I will smoke this one. This has been smoked. I know that because the inside of the chamber is, I believe, coated, and he did not use a bulk coating. So my guess is the restorer um, cleaned it up, reamed it down to bare briar, and then put a bulk coating on it. It's it's really well restored, though. It it, it almost looks like a, an unsmoked pipe. I mean, see, it's... Uh, there's no rim charring, there's nothing. It's uh, really in great shape. So, I will smoke it. Um, and I look forward to it. So this is my most recent Briar Spirit pipe. And, you know, I, it's not the same as commissioning one and talking to Kirk about it and having all the inside story and everything and knowing what the spirit told him. But uh, it's still special. So that's it. That's my story about uh, Kirk Fitzgerald and Briar Spirit Pipes. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you like this sort of thing. Maybe, you know, people have asked me to do a, my, my pipe collection, and I use the word collection in the title card. It's gathering, but I didn't think people would know what I meant if I said Briar Spirit Pipe Gathering, like maybe I'm having an event or something. So, but we don't collect pipes, we gather them. Because uh, we smoke them. Collectors don't smoke them. But if you, I was thinking maybe I could do my, like my Sabinelli's or something like that, or my, uh, my Phil Rivera pipes, my Jay Mouton pipes, whatever. Uh, that might be interesting. Or maybe I could just do my artisan pipes, because that would be a long video. Not that I have a ridiculous number of them, but there's, there's more than a few. Uh, yeah, maybe I can, I can break it down somehow like that. Let me know if you'd be interested in that, because I don't want to do the whole, oh, and this is another pipe, you know, that's, that's boring. But if I can tell a story about them. So, like I said earlier, I'm going to basically have a very lazy Sunday today. I might do some stuff down here in the shop. I might, might putter around a bit, but nothing, uh, nothing too big. And uh, day off tomorrow, where I'll be caught up on all the stuff I should have done today. Yard work and laundry and such. And then back to work on Tuesday, which is all, all good. Coming week, I'm having dinner with a friend that I have not seen in a couple of years. Uh, somebody that I used to work with, and we stay in touch. Uh, we're both involved with a local university, so uh, usually I see her you know, once a year or so at, a, at, a, at an event or something, but it's been a couple years. We've, we've kind of missed one another. We live in the same area, and we, we usually try to get together for dinner at least once a year, so that's going to happen this coming Thursday. I'm looking forward to seeing her, catching up and hearing about all our mutual friends that I have touched. I'm in contact with, but she's not. She's in contact with, but I'm not, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it should be, should be entertaining. Plus, we get to do industry gossip, which is boring for anybody that's not in the industry I'm in. And that's it. Wife is still in Pittsburgh, doing well. Ray is uh, hanging in there, uh, getting stronger. But, you know, still 94 now. He had his birthday last week, week before, mid-August. 
Uh, 94 years old, not bad, not bad. Scott's a bit up and down these days. My brother, he, um, he he had to go back on some antibiotics. Apparently had an infection starting again. They still, they're doing a seventh biopsy. And I said, if they keep biopsying this thing, it's going to be gone. There's not going to be anything for, left for them to take out. So, anyway, if you don't mind keeping all three of them, my wife, her father, and my brother in, in your prayers, uh, it's appreciated. And I will keep all of you in mind, uh, many of you. Talk to me about special intentions, and I always, always think of those. But I definitely think of the whole community when when I'm praying, uh, because we need to we need to be there for one another, and you've always been there for me. So I appreciate that. Anyway, before I get mushy or mushier, because some of this uh, some of this uh, Kirk Fitzgerald stuff was a little mushy, but he was a good friend. You all take care. Have a great Sunday and a fantastic week again. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.